All right, with preseason coming up for sport, I'm gonna show you guys at home how to tape an ankle, a classic ankle taping for ankle sprains and injury prevention using rigid tape. I did this a while back, a very long time ago. We're redoing this video because I'm gonna show you how to use the underwrap underneath, which is a crepe underwrap, instead of a fixable or Therafix underwrap. The reason for this is a lot of people, when they're taping it, maybe they don't wanna shave and they wanna take it off easy or they wanna take it off every couple of days. This crepe tape basically sticks on and comes off really easy. It also acts as a compression. So that is really good when someone sprained their ankle and they've got a bit of swelling the compression helps along with the rigid taping. Now, if you are a, the difference in tape is, if you're a child or you're an adult with a small foot like this, which is a size six, I would go for that size taping, not the 75 mil. So you go for the sort of 50 mil, not the 75. That's for when you've got a really big ankle, large human, go for that for an underwrap. So we're gonna use this one today. So you'll notice with this tape, very stretchy, okay? And obviously stick at the same time, but it sticks to itself, which is a good thing. So skin, I can just take it off. The good thing is it sticks to itself. So you just gotta be sort of careful you put it on that you are making sure it's sticking to itself, not the skin as the anchor. Make sure to start off with, when you always take the ankles, get it at dorsiflexion zero degrees, so right angles at the foot. I would start down at the foot for this. Okay, just put a little like anchor. What you're gonna do, that won't stick to the skin, but it will stay there if I wrap it, okay? And this tape, you don't need too much compression. If you get too much compression, you're gonna to cause too much compression. It's gonna to be too tight for the person. They're not gonna like it. That might be okay if you're just playing sport for three hours, but if you need this on all day, it's not gonna be very nice. So just be careful how much crank you put on this tape. And you just need to make sure the skin is covered because the reason we're doing an underwrap like this, like I said, there's compression, but this zinc oxide richard tape does give some people a bit of a rash on the skin if they've had it on for too long. Sometimes with like some, if you're just taping for a game, you can just put it straight on, right? But a lot of people who've got spraining also need the stability for a long period of time. So we like putting this underneath and one, it gets this off really easy, all right? So just make sure you are covering all the skin that you need to. All right, keep that tight, 90, that's it. And just be careful too, you don't go and crinkle the tape, all right? So we're going pretty good there. We might've missed a bit there. It doesn't really matter because the majority of that skin is covered and that's how she's gonna get it off pretty easy. Go up to about mid shin, lock it off, okay? Now again, like I said, that's probably gonna come off if you don't lock it down. So what we do, now that we've got that, there's your compression. Really easy way of doing it rather than cutting off all those strips of fix them all. And that will act as a barrier to this tape. It'll act as a compression. And the beautiful thing about it for you guys at home, when you have to take it off, it's gonna be so easy because it won't pull your skin. Or anything like that. If you've got hairy legs, like if you're a male and you've got hairy legs, it won't pull them out. So this one, what I would do to lock that off at the top, put an anchor over rigid tape. Sometimes I like just keeping that foot in dorsiflexion while I do this. This one here, you're gonna find the anchor is gonna go up on a little bit of an angle, just the shape of that shin, okay? So that's your, once you've got your anchor, you're gonna do two stirrups, okay? Start on the inside. Usually, you've got a lateral ankle sprain. Maybe it's your ATFL, maybe it's this LCL down here. Whatever, if you've got a lateral ankle sprain, we're gonna do a bias on keeping this side more taut than this side. So I would start on the inside, and you're gonna go, if you can see this, you're gonna go not directly over that malleolus. Okay, I'm on the posterior side of this malleolus, all right, not the anterior, and you start off that way, and this part doesn't need to be too tight, okay? What you do then is wrap it around, make sure, again, you're on the back part of that malleolus, you're not directly over the middle of it, because the second one is gonna overlap that by half, and then that'll cover you. So if I get to this point here, I wanna make sure she's in dorsiflexion, so I push it up. Crank that, okay, keep that really rigid there, and then push it down above the malleolus there, okay? So you can see I'm covering the back part of it. Now, wherever you put that tape, maybe you missed it, maybe you went over too far, you're gonna cover this by half, all right? So what it enables you to get is 
Taping for a stirrup, that's twice as wide as the taping, but you get a reinforcement in the midsection right over the middle of that. So this second one, I'm gonna go over, if you look at that, I'm over by half, all right? So now if this is like 38 mil tape, I'm almost making a you know, 70 mils wide taping there. Maybe about 60. And then come up that way. Always rip it off before you put it down so you can grab it like that. And then again, crank it there. Just watch how much you cut in here. Be careful of this. And this, this, this one here needs to be behind the fifth mat. Okay, so the fifth mat head is sitting there. It needs to be behind that, all right? And up into there. Now this is actually really good too. If you've got like some sort of, you know, perineal damage there, it actually supports that perineal tendon, the brevis one in there. So that's quite nice. So make sure that's all locked down. That's your two stirrups, all right? That's gonna basically your main structure of stopping it moving. I can't even move her ankle into inversion now. So she's gonna be really locked up there. The risk of her rolling ankle is a lot less. And she's giving her brain a lot of support about ligament stability. Sometimes these things are about stopping it rolling, but also convincing the brain you've got a strong ankle. If I put stirrups around like that, I'm basically acting like a ligament, which gives me that sense of stability, sense of like comfort, then she performs better when she's playing, all right? So, once you've done the stirrups, then you do what we call like a J-lock. I would start, doesn't really matter, I start, I start on the outside. So, I would go around about 45 degree angle, roughly, okay? Start on the inside of the shin, all right? Come around, make sure that's locked down. Come around the top, you see the angle there? I'm above the malleoli, okay? And around the back of the Achilles, above the heel, on that same angle. When I wrap it around this way, I'm on the same angle coming around there, okay? So I'm locking that heel on this side. What that'll do is then give me, and make this a long when you do that, then you can gently wrap this around. Be careful not to go too hard around the back of, or underneath that heel. Come around the same line here, remember not to cut off into that fifth mat, otherwise they can't move their foot like this. And then you're gonna come up on the same angle. You see that line there? I'm gonna come up on the same angle. This is where I tighten that tape up. And I just sort of push it down as I go, make sure it's in dorsiflexion, and then anchor up. Crucial thing is a big long anchor up there, which will give you more stability. All right, so now I've got, this is sort of almost like the anchor part, so I can crank, stop the heel moving, and then give it a big long anchor this way. Now she really can't move, okay? So she can't move sideways, and she can't move into inversion. What she can do, though, is move her forefoot into inversion. This part's fine. We want to stop the mid to hind foot moving, so we don't want any movement there. We don't want any movement on the midfoot, but the forefoot can move, so that's beautiful. And she'll find that you can play sport well with this, but support this part here. Now that's probably enough for a lateral ankle sprain. If you're one of those people that's had some medial damage when you sprain it, say you've bruised this side, or maybe you've got a deltoid sort of ligament sprain on the same side, maybe you had a really bad sprain, what you can do is go the other way as well to reinforce it. So you go exactly the same starting point, but the opposite way around. So I go from the outside or lateral side of the shin, going over medially, Think of where you're doing your angles, cross over, you're gonna come around, there's that heel. Make sure you're not too low on the heel. Some people can get too low and then you miss it. So you might just need to reposition that and then across here like that and across that part. That locks it there. Now, the only difference with the anatomy of the ankle and the way the foot moves is you're not gonna come up across here. I find if people come up across this, they're gonna get where their tibialis anterior tendon is here, oh, sorry, your extensor tendon is here, you're going to get maybe some blistering or soreness if I put tape over that tendon. So what I'm gonna do is come around under the arch and just lock it off there. Because the main thing was securing this side, okay, and that side to stop it going that way. So we're not really worrying about pulling up too high because she doesn't roll in as much as she rolls out, all right? We're not worrying about, she, there's, the ankle doesn't roll out as far as it rolls in, all right? So we don't need as much support up the shin to stop her rolling down. Now, if that's good enough, then great. For the really unstable ones, what you do is double up the lateral one you first did. Okay, so you can then overlay this one again with another one. 
all right? Um, that's some of the people a bit over OTT, but some people who are very unstable, who need a lot of lockup, that additional one you can add on. So just think, okay, if I'm gonna add on one more, I'll do exactly the same line as that one, okay? So I end up coming up here again. If you've done that, or if you haven't done that, you need to lock it off. You don't really need to lock off the bottom, it's the ends up here, especially when they're putting on pants, shoes, tights, whatever, you don't want this all rolling down. So this one comes underneath, same as before. So exactly the same one as you started, and just, it doesn't need to be tight. You're just stopping all those bits and pieces rolling off, okay? And voila, there you have it. So, classic ankle taping, bias to the lateral side to stop this inversion movement, all right? And that should be good to go to run on. So, to prove my point about taking it off, what you do to take it off is just undo maybe the top. You might have to cut it, you might have to rip it, but what you do is just create a little bit of a channel at the top, like this, okay? And what you can do with a pair of scissors is just come underneath that, just watch the skin, and just cut that one. So what you can do is just rip that off and just take off the bit. You'll find that, that this, when this comes off, it doesn't pull the skin, okay? So they might think, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Just cut a little bit. You may find, once you've got that, the good thing about the, the rigid tape is it rips really well sideways, okay? Not so good long ways, see I can't rip that, so then you go, okay, just cut that bit off. And then as they come around, you can just keep ripping that off, like that. And then this just peels out, okay? And then you, once you've taken that tape off, okay, and you've got that all off like that, pretty easy, then you can just unwind this. And you'll find that this comes off really nice and easy and doesn't hurt the skin, doesn't rip anything off, all right? And that is how you take it off. See you next time.